Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with it's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org consequence and the consequence podcast network. Thanks as always for making your way here for check on series. Of course, you know what to do. If you, uh, if you like what you see, what you hear hit that subscribe button, I put out three new interviews every single week. So it's a great way to keep up with all of your favorite artists. And I could not be more excited to have him here today. Neil Halstead of slow dive. We're back with a new record called everything is alive. Hello, sir. Hi, Kyle. How are you? I'm well, and seriously, it's so great to uh, to talk to you. The new music, the old music, everything you've done in between, uh, I'm such an admirer of. But this new album is so good, and I, I'm I'm even looking at your tour list here. You guys got a monster. You're going to be out on the road for a little bit this year, right? Yeah, yeah, and and we we did a fair bit last year as well, starting in September. So uh, I haven't really looked at the schedule yet. I don't want to scare myself, but yeah. <laughs> There's it looks few, like you're busy for you know. it's good it's good though we 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 sort of enjoy the touring you know it's it's a bit tough being away from home for long periods but we try and try not to be away for two you know usually it's like three or four weeks at a time you know and then we'll be home for a bit so yeah it's a good way to do it but yeah and i should mention um because i'm here in louisville may 7th you'll be here in louisville at the uh, paris town so be good okay. yeah yeah I look forward to that. I think yeah. um, I think last time I was in Louisville was maybe 15, 16 years ago. I did like a weird radio convention there. Um, oh, the uh, non-convention when it was still here. Yeah. yeah. I drank yeah. a lot of whiskey. I hung out with Ed Harcourt and Nora Jones, which was fun. Uh-huh. Um, I think that was when she was having a really big record actually she was she had a big record start, and starting her journey yeah it was an infamous infamous show for her as well because of those radio um, conventions people are can they can be a little bit loud and gabby during the shows yeah yeah and, and she, she was, was having just, none of that just shut it down right. didn't hurt her career at all that. <laughs> i remember being told about it i missed it but i was told all about it yeah she she told them off yeah good and good on her too because they deserved it <laughs> no it's good to see i mean you know you've been with that you like you have been touring for a very long time has your routines changed these days like how do you keep yourself sane and busy on the road these uh, on on tours like this um Still trying to figure that out. The, the temptation was always to drink a lot, you know, and I found like I can't really do that now. You know, I still like to go and find a nice pint of Guinness somewhere. And but rather than spend all day there, I'll uh, try try and do some other stuff as well. Um, yeah, no, it 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 can be it can be tricky. It's a sort of a weird, you know, your day is a bit odd, you know. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, because everything happens, you're sort of, everything is sort of, you know, it, you know, it's this thing that's happening at nine or 10 o'clock at night, you know, so the rest of the day, yeah, it's just figuring out, but there's, a, you know, I try, you know, I always have a laptop with me and guitar, you know, and so I, I try and do music or work on different things. Or You can't just yeah. binge curb your enthusiasm so many times, I guess. That's... <laughs> <laughs> um but you know there's always stuff to see you know we're sure. always usually in interesting cities and so there's always if you can have the motivation and um you know go and see an art gallery or and at this point there's usually someone i know somewhere <laughs> somewhere close so. that's helpful i mean you know friends yeah. in every city kind of a thing that's exactly. very helpful. So it's yeah. just like it's always a nice chance to catch up with people uh if if you can you know so, right yeah right well i am excited to see see this record perform live but but getting into it you know so the story's been told you know it's now been a handful of years since since the uh the last record and for all the obvious reasons pandemic etc cetera, etc cetera. but even with that did you find that getting that reunion record out of the way did that did that lend anything to did that take the weight off of getting into this one? I mean, at all is there is there any direct comparison to the two records? I mean, it did feel quite different, I suppose, approaching this one, um, and I kind of felt like we needed to start it somewhere sort of different to where we'd started other records, 
you know, just so that there was, um, yeah, just just to give it a sort of an element of trying to do something different. And um, I think the, you know, slow dive we recorded straight out of having done a bunch of touring after we got back together, and I think it it just carried that kind of energy with it so it was a it was a quicker record to do in that and, and this one was what took a lot longer you know we started in i guess i started throwing ideas out to the band in 2019 um so it took a while and it was quite slow yeah slow at times painful process right and you know i it yeah it took a while to figure out what kind of record it was going to be you know and probably that didn't it kind of figured itself out really towards the end but it you know we started off with I sent the band like over 40 ideas that were just electronic sketches really well some of them were more finished than others but they were all just sort of instrumental electronic things that I'd done really in the last sort of five six years just stuff that I've done on my own in the studio and I thought it might be an interesting way to start a slow dive record you know just use a few of those to and just see see where they went really you know yeah do you find that that did change the way you all did song like like so much of music happens in a jam I, i'm going to use that loosely you know it's just noodling around you know finding your spot but yeah. but yeah. and I, I don't know if that's the same for you but you know when when you're sending it to them it, you know and, and here's demos or whatever here's pieces yeah like how much does that approach then change the way that you write a song because it, it doesn't just become you know a group of people in a room feeling their way out until the song is created yeah i mean we don't i mean there's only a few songs we've ever w really worked that way but what we do is usually, you know, just work on an idea. So if I bring an idea in, we work on it as a band, you know. Um, and in some ways that there is an element of jamming with that, you know, because you're just playing around with an initial idea and you just see what kind of direction you can take it in. Um, and so you'll try it in loads of different ways and just see how you can extend the idea and um but i think digital recording makes that process really interesting because you can you know you can really dig into taking loops and different mm -hmm. pieces of things and playing around with them really easily which was much harder to do you know when we first started recording in the 90s it was still all on tape and you know melon yellow was a track where we literally had not a song that we just accidentally put on the tape the wrong way around and it sounded really mental backwards you know so we ended up basically just adding a few things on top of that and some vocals and that was the song but doing something like that now was much easier to do you know but uh, you know um but do you get the happy accidents in that way as often you do yeah because you I mean, and that's really almost what so I've looked for really initially is just that happy accident where you're like, oh, that's cool. Let's, yeah. some, let's work on that, you know, use that as the basis for something. Yeah, I, I love because correct me if I'm right, like you all still record in the same place you always have, right? Yeah, I mean, I have a studio here um, in Cornwall um, where I live. Uh, which I do a lot of work in, but the slow dive we've used a studio, our friend's Chris Hufford studio in, uh, uh, which is out near Oxford, and we've used that studio since pretty much day one. Um, so we always end up going back there and doing some work there. It's yeah. just a, like I guess it's a comfortable environment. Still got the same sofa, you know, when we were kids. <laughs> So it's just this kind does of the sofa, does the sofa get cleaned uh, the sofas don't get cleaned right that's not a thing you really do it's, it's, it's a leather it's a very uh, leather sofa yeah. right because every studio had a leather sofa especially but, back then. of course a friend of mine told me this great story about he he got to work 
um, with Tom Jones once doing a vocal <laughs> and he had a pretty grotty studio and he felt compelled to buy a new leather sofa before Tom came in and and did his vocal and apparently he came in with his entourage did the vocal in about five minutes and disappeared without <laughs> mentioning once how nice the sofa was <laughs> but you got a new but, sofa yeah, out of it regardless leather, leather sofas were pretty de rigueur in the 80s and 90s i think i'm not sure if it's still the same and <laughs> i feel like there's a coffee table book somewhere in this conversation yeah. about the uh the uh, this the uh, the sofas the studio sofas of the eighties and nineties studio so. sofas yeah <laughs> if you're looking for a side project let's just throw that tell some stories yeah <laughs> um so back on the songwriting and 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 sort of further on what you were talking about it here when I hear you talk about songs a lot of the time of course you know I mean there is a slow dive sound even though it changes from album to album. But when, so when I hear you talk about it, it's less about like a lot of songs. Oh, that song's about, you know, it becomes about the story with you. It always seems to start with the mood. Is that how you start a song? Is it about mood with you? I think it it, it really is with Slow Dive. I, I mean, when I'm, you know, I spent a long time writing acoustic music and basically making almost folk records and it was the other way around the lyrics were kind of the grounding thing that was the bit you worked around and with slow dive it, it's definitely we we work around an atmosphere you know so it's it's that's the the spark really that that begins the thing yeah yeah you get one moment on there right i mean the uh, andalusia please that's the uh yeah which is actually a, a really old song of mine that i hadn't put on a solo record and it just hung around and I ended up kind of uh, redoing the the melody a bit and and sort of thought well maybe it'll work for a slow dive album you know in a slightly different way yeah yeah it's a cool moment on the record how many of those and maybe that's a obvious question but like like how much is in the vault? How how many opportunities do you have? Because you said like you started with like forty ideas that you sent over. Oh yeah, there's a lot in the vault. There's a lot in the vault, Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess yeah. you know because I've talked I mean, to I, other artists. I go to I go to the studio a lot and I work on stuff and most of it never sees the light of day. You yeah. Know. Well, I guess um, you know what I was saying. You, know, you, you forget about it. You know that's. The right that's the right problem. and now it's even easier to forget about stuff because hard drives just kind of sit there and you get it gets full and you get another hard drive and you forget about or you know it and then you realize you don't have the right lead for the old hard drive anymore <laughs> you know stuff like that so it just sits there it just know? sits there well this you know when i see when artists get further into their career when they've been together longer you know, it's almost like, um, what am I trying to say? There's less time wasted, if that's a way to put it. That's it sounds like a bad way to put it, yeah. but but you know, it, everything becomes more concise. There seems to be less chances for a deluxe edition where you just have and here's you know twenty other songs that we recorded that didn't make the record. You know, that's yeah. I think we've always been very maybe overly. Um curated and you know we curate curate our stuff maybe you know I, I like when we did the first album we were we didn't want to put any old we didn't want to put any of the ep tracks on the record because we wanted it to be a completely new record which seems a bizarre decision now because our strongest material at that point was the you know the singles really you know when we like Alan McGee had to literally beg us to put Catch the Breeze on the first album. He wanted us to put, you know, a bunch of stuff from the EPs because I suppose he realized that actually albums are the things that that survive, really. EPs are not the go-to artifact, you know. <laughs> so, but I think we've always been a bit like that where we, we just want to have this one sort of thing be it an ep or an album that is distinct and individual and um is not you know 
doesn't have a lot of filler you know we, I, I i mean personally i don't like long albums i think albums should be eight or nine songs 40 minutes tops maybe 45 but you know in the, in the 90s everyone was putting out cds with like over an hour's worth of material on it and it's just it just becomes a bit boring you know right um and and i think probably just growing up listening to vinyl and being you know that thing of having four songs five songs or whatever each side and it's a it's a nice chunk of music you know it's a good way to consume it i think it's really re, people artists really had it figured out early on because of the parameters i mean that's yeah. as they would say you couldn't put too much music on one side of the record because it would degrade the sound so you sort of had like we figured out just yeah. by chance, it seems like 40 minutes is a really good amount of time to put together a piece of musical art. Yeah, that's right. And you can take a little break halfway if you want, roll a joint, whatever it is you want to do, have a cup of coffee. But yeah, I mean, it always, maybe because we, we conditioned ourselves to that length that, that anything more feels too much to me. But but yeah, it there's only so long you can focus, I think, or concentrate on the yeah. music. No, I, I I agree on that, and and that's uh, like as someone who really was paying attention to the music of the '60s and '70s, and I think I think it was your bandmates who was saying, you know, if it, when it came to '60s pop, like you were the person that probably listened to that a little bit more than everybody else. But I think, yeah, I, I'm a massive '60s kind of kid. Yeah, that was my yeah. But at the same time, like you don't mind going for the drony experimental stuff on on the other side like is that a is there ever a contrasting little argument that happens inside you <laughs> about you know what to do like like you have this this classic pop side and you have this great you know for better terms shoegazy droney side to you like what's what's the compromise there how does that work i don't think you need to i mean i think you just if you like we you know i think we all as a band sort of like both sides of that you know so i guess it's nice to try and keep both sides alive you know yeah. so i think we did that right from the off you know um with the very first ep and we we sort of continued we all we had a sort of tradition with the eps where we would put the single on the a side and then there'd be something like an instrumental or something a bit different on the b side um and so I think the albums just expand that a little bit, you know, it's try, it's always trying to fit both all aspects of the band onto the record. You know, you don't want to confine yourself. I don't think we'd feel comfortable just doing an album of pop songs and we probably couldn't, you know, I think there's, um, but there's definitely a side of us that really lo just loves a great pop song. You know, we just did, we just did some shows with The Cure and they're like, uh, you know we're all massive massive cure fans since since we were kids and just i think they're really good at that you know they have these amazing pop songs and then they have these great drawn out you know things like a forest that just go on and on and they you know but it's still compelling and it's you know it's still beautiful and um but they're a band that does that really well i think you know combine those two things mm -hmm. absolutely do you think we'll ever hear that that Cure album that's become Chinese democracy for them? <laughs> well, rumors rumors are afoot that it may may see daylight. You know, um, Nick is our resident Cure expert, so he's always feeding us little little things. And um, but yeah, who knows? Yeah, I, right. you know, I hope so. You know, I, I the new stuff they were playing live sounds amazing. Like the first song, the song they open with. Um, it was it's really really good and I, you know um so hopefully yeah 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 let um those moments they are evident on here I, I think you've talked about them before the uh uh kisses and and say if, is is it a leaf is it a, a, a life like i've I, oh a life a life i've gone back and forth i was like i need someone to say this because i want to call it alfie to begin with but <laughs> it's weird right i mean my um yeah, Rachel always used to call it Alfie. And for yeah. about a year, she was calling it Alfie. And at a certain point, I was like, it's actually a life. But I don't I don't know why it is a life. It just was, 
you know when you're working on rough ideas they usually end up having really stupid sort of working titles and that that one always was that and stayed that and it might have just been a spelling yeah. a spe <laughs> a spe happy accident there we go that's see that's that. yeah. but those pop those pop sensibilities are in both of those songs and 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 hearing you talk about even second guessing a song like kisses like maybe it's too pop like like lessons learned that maybe there's not such a thing for you all because that's if the cure is any example i guess yeah i think we worked when we were working on kisses it we went that's the, the song that probably went through it, we recorded it in so many different ways and I think a lot of that was because we were scared of the pop version which was the one we put on the record because it's quite light lyrically or at least the chorus is very light lyrically and it felt we didn't want to make a kind of facetious track you know and I think like I always worried that it was too too light and because the, it came very easily as a song it was one of those ones where I wrote, a, I did the demo and I sent it to everyone. And I was like, does anyone know where this song comes from? Because it felt so familiar to me. And I felt like I must have, you know, ripped someone else off, you know. So I was like, <laughs> I was saying, Nick, is this like a Cure song? Is it a New Order song? It's just because it had those elements to me, but I couldn't tell if I'd actually taken one of their songs. <laughs> <laughs> so you're always like slightly scared of the ones that come easy you know it's kind of like there must be something wrong with it you know it ends up being a, a nice hit for you guys that's you know it's... yeah and I really I love playing it live it's a really fun one to do live and it it's interesting mm -hmm. like how familiar that one's become to the audience already you know so on the other one on a live what happened when you stepped up to the mic the, I, I mean it that song was actually um my partner ingrid wrote the part that rachel sings was actually written by her mm -hmm. and it was a song that i'd been playing around the house quite a lot but it, it was pretty similar to well, it's slightly different to what you hear but it didn't have those breakdown sections um and ingrid started singing this something i longed to it and i was like oh that's really cool let's record that and we ended ended up sort of making it into a into another section in the song and then obviously Rachel re-sung it um but yeah it's definitely a mood a mood piece mm -hmm. I suppose but um it does happen like like slab is the same like slab is really I think more of what I was thinking along the lines of that like what happens when you go up yeah. to a song where it's just like yeah it's vocal things that's what that's what I was yeah. getting at yeah yeah, yeah, the, 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 the slab is definitely more in that in in that that vibe. You know, a life has got this story about a river, which was sort of I think just harking back to where Rachel and I grew up. Um, and you know, there's the river was quite an important part of the town and all that sort of stuff. And um, but thinking about that, I guess rivers are. You know, any town has got a river, right? Generally. We have a river. It's the closest yeah, but thing. It's like where the legend comes from. There's sure. always like stories about people. Yeah. You know, dark stories or whatever, you know. Rivers are cool. Particularly in England, I think. You know, we have a we have an interesting relationship to rivers. Um, but yeah, so but that's where our life comes from. So that that yeah, but uh, the slab is definitely a kind of we just wanted it to be this heavy slavish bit of music yeah you know yeah but I, I love i do i love how the vocals just float around and it's like you can't re you can sing along to it and you can't at the same time you know it's almost like if i try right. to sing along to the slab i'm i'm more or less creating another vocal part for it you know, at the same time yeah ideal know? yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's cool those mood moments and um i'll quickly also because i was looking at my notes here uh you the um uh, the unknown country, uh, Lily Gladstone having a big moment right here. Yeah, yeah. What did you yeah. do with that? Um, so um, Marissa Maltz, the director, um, I guess got in touch because she wanted to use some a couple of slow dive tunes in the film, um, and then she sent what she had of the film. It wasn't finished at that point. 
um and obviously it's lily's i think it's her first sort of full full fit feature um but yeah i i mean i really love the film and and i offered to do some score work for it and so i ended up doing doing a few scenes score work um but yeah it's a great film i think if people get a chance to see it um it's a sort of I don't know, it's sort of like a docu-film in some ways, you know, it's not like a scripted film, you know, mm. and a lot of the people in it aren't really acting. They're real, yeah. you know. But Lily is acting, but is also real. It's, yeah, it's an interesting kind of, but it's beautifully shot, the cinematography is amazing, it's a kind of a road movie, you know. And yeah, Lily's gone on and she's, you know, the killers of the flower moon. And mm. I think she just got a, she got a golden, golden globe. Yeah. Yeah. So, which is amazing. So, um, yeah. yeah. And yeah, Marissa's great, the director. She's, um, you know, she's, she's working on another film at the minute that I'm doing some music for, which kind of is sort of somewhat related to Unknown Country. Um, but yeah, well, well worth checking out. Yeah, cool. Well, I look forward to checking that one out too. In the meantime, I love the new record, and uh, I'm excited to see you guys May seventh right here in the Louisville. Neil, thank you so much, seriously, for taking the time to talk today, man. It's been a real, real pleasure. Thanks, Carl, and uh, yeah, we'll see you, see you at the show. I hope. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you. For, uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.